Okay, well, uh, hello everyone. Okay, go ahead. Can you all hear? Can you all hear me? <laughs> you can? All right, let me get a little bit closer. Give me one second. Uh, we try to get the laptop up too. Give me one second. All right, say something like that. Hello? Hello? Can you hear hello? now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 So I go ahead and introduce myself. Yeah, you can okay. Well, hello everyone again. Good evening, my name is Dr. David Aitipade. I run the Brain and Body Foundation. And as you can tell from my accent that I am not necessarily from this uh, country. Certainly not from Maryland. <laughs> but uh, can anyone guess where I'm from? Um, Nigeria. Whoa! Uh, Canada? Okay, well, we're, we're, we're straight away now. No, this is the right first time. Nigeria. Yes, that's, that's the country. It's, Another question, which country has the most number of black people on the planet? Nigeria. That's right. <laughs> Nigeria has the most number of black people who look like me mm -hmm. on the planet. So um, I'll say a little bit about what we do with the Brain and Body Foundation. But also, just before I say that, I really have a big passion. Uh, in fact, I, I reached out to the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. because uh, we were seeing that there was this huge, uh, much higher risk of black people having dementia than white people did, do. And uh, I felt it wasn't being addressed like it should be. I felt that we weren't pointing out, the, well, first of all, we weren't pointing out that fact. And secondly, we weren't really addressing why that is so. Because, as you would agree with me, if, if you're not addressing something, it's going to keep on growing, it's going to keep on festering, it's going to keep on getting worse, and we'll be blaming everybody else except the problem. And so I felt that there was some agency that we needed to uh, let people know so that they can take responsibility at certain levels for some of their actions, behaviors, um, choices, and so that we can really make a difference because it's, it's really not right for us to have twice the amount of dementia, as you all know. By the way, how many of you here is related to or have someone that you know that's close to you who, has, who is dealing with dementia at this point in time? Yeah. Wow. Somebody passed away from it? Yeah. Your mother did? Yeah. I am so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. And anybody else? There were about three people from this side. My mother. Your mother too mm -hmm. did. How, how long did you have to live with it um, before she, she passed away? Probably maybe two years, but she passed away with, from pneumonia, but she did have dementia as well. She had dementia for right, two years. Uh, right, but she okay. passed away from pneumonia. But it's okay. probably about two years that we actually yeah. She lived, so it was just two years she lived then there? I, right, yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a remarkably short time. They yeah. can't hear me. They cannot hear me. Yes. Yeah. So let me just take it off. You can take it off. Yeah, I can. Let's just do that. Hey. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. That's much better, right? You mean all this time you weren't hearing me? Oh. No, I heard you. Okay. You're not clear. Okay, good. Good. Oh, I was afraid I forgot. <laughs> I was afraid I heard anything I said. So usually it's about 10 years from diagnosis to death mm -hmm. and it's a really, it's really tasking on the individual themselves, also obviously on the caregivers and loved ones, um, as you can attest to, I'm sure. Um, little, not as much is being said about the caregivers themselves and what we now know is that over 40% of caregivers who deal with um, a challenging situation like you mentioned, they die, or forty percent die before the person they're taking care of dies. And that's obviously because of the stress and the, the stress of just having to take care of it. So we need to talk about that as well. Anyway, back to who I am and what I'm doing. Before I go there, we're, today we're going to be talking about ten ways to love your brain. So basically, uh, things that you can do to strengthen your brain to improve brain function. And to protect, everybody say protect. Protect. Protect against the ravages of dementia. And it's only going to get worse. The numbers are astounding. Mm -hmm. The numbers are expected to, to double in the next 20 or 20 years or so. And the brunt of it is guess who? Us. Yes. Us. Why, why, why is this always happening to us? I don't get it, right? I mean, why, why it's always happening? No matter what. The only thing I can see is uh, that we have a clear, I mean, there are two areas that we, 
I see my career advantage, and that's in, in skin cancer. <laughs> we don't. I, I started my career as a, as a radiation oncologist. I almost never saw people, uh, black people with, with skin cancer. We, but we did see a lot of our, our binos with skin cancer because of the light skin. And, uh, and then uh, osteoporosis, bone, bone, problems, bone weakening. We tend to have denser, stronger bones, so we don't mm -hmm. suffer as much from uh, osteoporosis and osteopenia. Mm -hmm. uh, but by and large, there's a lot of we're the, we the kings and queens of prostate cancer and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it's not just in the US, it's all over the world. So anywhere you see a black population, it's then every vaginist. So there are specific things that we are beginning to find out. Alzheimer's disease, dementia, these brain disorders. For the most part, they don't just jump on you out of the blue, just jump out of the bushes and ambush you. There's a progress, there's a procession. There are things that happen to us over a period of time that eventually lead towards dementia. It's not a sudden thing. Many times it's from our early 20s. And I'm saying, when I say our, I'm talking about people in general, black, white, blue, red, brown. A lot of us, you know, these are things that basically we did not know anything about. We just lived our lives, you know, grew up, got married, had children, lived our lives, hustled, you know. But these things were going on behind the scenes and eventually led to a point where you had dementia. Yes, of course, genes play a role in it. If your parents had it, there might be a chance you might be more prone to it. And of course, age. Age plays a role in it, which is why it's one of the reasons why it's, they're saying women have, again, this is another demographic, women have twice the rate of men. Uh, we all know that women have twice the rate of dementia as men do. No. Yes. Twice, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just hear about this? No, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Twice, yes. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> That actually, that actually helps, I think I gotta tell you, because men tend to bottle things up, men, women tend to, ex uh, tend to be more free with their feelings and expression. So that helps. So no, it's not because women talk a lot about <laughs> Try something else. <laughs> mm. One of the things is, it is oh, oh, women tend to outlive men, so dementia is one of the primary uh, things. Um, so age. Old age is one of the primary things that make you more prone to dementia. It's basically you lived up, the longer you live, the more exposed you are to the elements, the ravages of life, the stresses of life, the longer your brain is exposed to it. The other, the, the other, the other, the other um, demographic are the military veterans. They also have twice the rate of dementia as the other population, the rest of the population does. You did know that. I'm what? a military veteran. You're a military veteran? Yeah? Okay. Well, why do you think that is so, though? Because of the different situations that we have been facing in yeah. over our years and careers uh, will cause that. Yeah. We have the stress and the weird occurring in yeah. our minds and our thoughts. Especially after when you served on the, on, on the, on the battlefield. Yes. Things like that. Well, thank you for your service, sir. Which, which branch were you? Army. I mean, again, I was in the army in Nigeria as well, too. And I have my, my, my course mates are major generals now. But uh, we're, we're already beginning to see that in, in our people as well. So, yes. so again, thank you for your service. Thank you, thank you sir. I appreciate it. Um, there's so much that needs to be done where that is concerned. So we need to teach the military about how to take care of their brains. It's not just what, you what you're exposed to during the service time or during the deployment. Is what you come back, come back to, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you don't know. Did you live with a veteran? Yeah, I lived with a veteran here in Korea in Vietnam. You did, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can, I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. So, what you, what you come back to, having to adapt to the new environment, the civilian life. You miss the discipline, you miss the camaraderie yes. of your team, your platoon mates, your teammates, whatever it is. And that is can be jarring to a lot of people. So anyway, back to what we're talking about. I run the Brain and Body Foundation and it's based in Nigeria and the US. Uh, we started first of all with kids with brain disorders. So autism, cerebral palsy. In a third world country like Nigeria, we're exposed, I mean, with only fewer than 30% actually have delivered their kids in the, in the hospitals. 
So a lot of them are delivered in churches and mosques at all. So there's a lot of risk for damage and a lot of damage happens. And of course, because they're poor, they can't get good treatments. And so it's like a vicious cycle. You're poor, you don't get good uh, antenatal care. You're poor, you don't get good birth delivery care and something happens and then you're poor, you can't even treat that thing well. So we stepped in and we, we, we saw that you could uh, use certain nutrients to help the brain repair itself. Many times what is happening with our brains is that we're just not being given the right tools, mm -hmm. resources, mm -hmm. nutrients, even water is a tool. Right. Not having enough hydration could be a problem too. Mm -hmm. And it's not being given at the right time, so the brain begins to suffer as a result. Anyway, so we started with that and eventually we had such great success. We went to the government, the government approved our approach. Eventually, um, Adults started bringing their adult parents and strokes and dementia, so we had to go into that as well. But because we are starting with kids, we knew how to, we, uh, we, were, we, we had learned what was safe for kids, and I'm so glad we started with kids. So we were able to know what was safe for kids, and we just basically applied the same principles to addressing adults as well. And so we've been doing that for many years. I still run my foundation in Nigeria. We do, we raise funds over here as well to, to do the work back in Nigeria. But like I said, we started looking at dementia. What are the ways we can do to prevent dementia? And even if you're beginning to have those issues like memory problems and so on, what can we do to help to at least nourish your brain back to health? And there is, it is possible to do that. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about prevention. So does everybody have a sheet of paper? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna start with the first one. It says what, what does it say on the top? I'll get y'all copies of that uh, handout. What, is it? what does it say at the top of the first page you have? Ten ways to love your brain. Boom, exactly. Now, uh, let me see. Is there some? All right. Does everybody have ten steps to men? I just want to say this about the Alzheimer's Association because I think it's very important that people are aware of it. It's what an amazing resource they are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the very bottom of the page, do you all see a phone number? Yeah, ten steps to ten steps to approach memory concerns. At the bottom of the page, you should see a phone number, and you should, you should see a website address. Do you all see that? Come on, people, talk to me. Yes, you do. It's very good. Please keep that handy. They are wonderful. It's a 24 7 uh, 1 800 number. There's someone always going to attend to you. So, everything from legal issues to questions about where to get a caregiver or where to find a good, uh, cheaper caregiving environment, they will work with you. They will help you out. I'm, I'm really impressed with their service. So, uh, please take advantage of that. By the way, there's an event coming up in. Um, on the 9th of December, I believe in Maryland, I don't have it with me now, but there's a major event for, it's called the Virginia Jones uh, Dementia and Black African Americans. Probably will, I'll send that to you. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's start. So there you go. That's the Alzheimer's Association for you. And I'm here to talk to you about 10 ways to love your brain. Let's start with the first one. Uh, yeah, feel, feel free to ask a question at any time. Oh, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a lecturer where you, I say don't ask me questions until the end. Now if it's going to take a while, if it's going to take some time, I will say, well, we can wait until the end, so we can talk about it later. But feel free, uh, you won't know if you don't ask, so be, be sure to ask. Let's start with the first one. I'm just going to read the top, um, the first paragraph. Growing evidence, and I like this part. Growing evidence indicates that people can reduce their risk of cognitive decline by adopting key lifestyle habits. Now, this is a, a huge 180 from what we were told five, 10 years ago. We were told, or we were meant to believe that with conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's disease, that it was, there was absolutely nothing you could do. You just, you just sit tight and hope it passes over you. Yeah, and put your head in the sand and just hope you don't have the genes or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that we don't know how it happens. And once it happens, there's no way we can stop it. We can give you drugs, but you and I both know, and the doctors themselves know, that even they know that it's not going to work. It's 
not going to stop it, it's not going to slow it. It's just going to progress and progress and progress. Up to now, we still cannot point to a specific drug that can do it, even with the billions and billions and billions of dollars that have been poured into it. So that underscores. So this is, first of all, this is really good news. We now know that there are lifestyle things that we can do. Again, I'm going to push on the black population. There, we, we, we must, we must, we must. How many must do I say? We <laughs> must. Many times. I'll keep on emphasizing this. Yes. Sure. Um, there are some things that are uncomfortable that I've spoken about in black groups, and some people didn't like the way it was said, and uh, there, there were some complaints. And so I'm learning as well because there, there's a cultural context in which certain things have to be said. Right. Um, so we're learning to do that, but I, I'm committed to like pointing these things out in, in love, but they have to be in clarity as well, because if you don't know what you're doing or not doing that is leading towards dementia, then how are you going to stop it or how are you going to start doing the right things? You need to know exactly what it is so that you can make the changes that are needed. So that's, again, uh, I would apologize in advance to you if I say anything that is untoward. <laughs> Please forgive me in advance, all right? Okay, uh, we continue. When possible, combine these habits to achieve maximum benefit for the brain and body. Start now. It is never too late or too early to incorporate healthy habits. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. All right, number one, it says break a sweat. Engage in regular cardiovascular exercise that elevates your heart rates and increases blood flow to the brain and body. Several studies have found an association between physical activity and reduced risk of cognitive decline. All right, so does anybody agree to that? Yes. So is everybody thinking like a, going on a walk regularly, like three to four times a week? Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say this too, in, a, in, in addition to that, one of the things that we're finding out too is that we want to be out in the sun as much as possible, okay? We want to be out in the sun. You want to take advantage of the sun as much as possible. You also want to, and I'm going to get back to the sun in a minute, but does anybody, want to say, does anybody know why I'm mentioning the sun? Vitamin D for D. Vitamin D3, yes. You've heard about it during COVID, right? Yeah. Did you know that it's very important for your brain as well? Did anybody know that? Okay. Huge connection. Oh, hopefully I'll get to that. Hopefully I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but you want to also take, I think the best time, the very best time to, does anybody know the best time to, to go out and exercise or to walk? Morning, maybe, yeah. Try again. Before the sun. Before the sun. Midday. Uh, Midday. Kind of. I'm, I'm talking about after, but after an event specifically, something you do like two or three times a day. Oh, before eating. After. After eating. After eating. Why? Because when you eat, what happens? What happens to your blood? What, what rises in your blood? Sugar. Sugar rises. Everybody's blood sugar rises, usually. And the kind of food we eat, at the time it rises really high. Another thing that rises is insulin. But I'm going to just, let, me, let me focus on the sugar for now. By, uh, what we know is that when you have sugar spikes, especially after eating, that it's over time, especially if you eat a lot of sugar and a lot of carbs, and you take a lot of soft drinks, we, we are big on that, by the way. That's why they market so heavily to us. Soft drinks, you know, we love soft drinks, we love sugary stuff. So what walking does, or exercise does, after a meal, is that it helps to bring the sugar levels down. We know that high sugar levels, over time, damage the brain, especially the memory centers of the brain, over time. There's a structure in the brain called the hippocampus, and that's the most important memory center of the brain. It's like the relay center for memory. It's very sensitive to sugar levels. So over time, it's, it's, it gets damaged. 
by inflammation and so on and so forth. So big tip number one, if you can't work out like Arnold Schwarzenegger, no way is asking you to do that. But we are asking you to increase your activity levels, especially after a meal, so that you control your blood sugar levels. It would be great if everybody was checking their blood sugar levels on a regular basis so that you can know whether or not you are prone to diabetes because one of the big risk factors for, for dementia is diabetes. Big, big, big risk factor. And guess who has twice the risk of diabetes as the rest of the population? <laughs> oh boy, people are related. Osteoporosis and skin cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, there might be some other things I haven't thought about, but at least the common things we, we kind of. I mean, the, the big kahuna, so to speak. Alright, what's the next one? Hit the books. Hit the books. Um, see, why, why, I, why, why I have this picture in front of me? Can you all see this? Can you all see this? Okay, so this is a picture of the brain. Now, the basic thing with the brain, uh, let's see if we can pull this up. Okay. So this is the brain, okay? I know it's, it's a very lovely picture of the brain, right? But for the brain to work, it doesn't matter whether it's your thinking, whether you're throwing a ball, or whether you're loving someone, whether you are trying to move around, where that this where that happens, it has to happen at the basic, most basic part, which is what is known as a synapse. Is anybody, anybody heard of synapse before? Okay, so it's where two brain cells meet. Basically, they don't actually touch, but basically, a nerve signal is sent from one brain cell to the next brain cell, and it's they don't meet, but they exchange chemicals. So chemicals go into this place called a cleft, and then it moves on to this, and therefore it continues like that. So if the brain thinks about moving the finger, for instance, it starts somewhere here in the brain, and then signals are sent through the equivalent of thousands of, and thousands of miles, and eventually gets to, I hope I draw this hand properly, the hand where the finger is moved, eventually through a pretty series of nerves. This has to happen before anything happens. And I mean anything, whether, it, whether it's digestion, whether it's like, like as I said, movement, whether it's perceiving sights and sounds and so on and so forth, or, or remembering things. This has to happen. And guess what? There are billions and billions and billions of these connections, as you can imagine. Somebody said it's about over a hundred trillion, and I don't know who actually sits down to actually count all that, but they said that's what it is, so I'm just going to believe them. How about you? Right. I mean, are you going to sit down and count that? Yeah. Not me either. Yeah. So we just we just take that for gospel truth until someone else comes comes around and refutes that, and then we'll go with that one too. But basically, we have a hundred trillion synapses, okay? And um, like I said, it just it just goes through throughout the process, throughout the brain, right there in the brain. Now, what happens with Alzheimer's disease? And I didn't I didn't define it. But we all know, okay, so let's, let, let me define that real quick. So dementia is an umbrella term that really uh, denotes or signifies brain damage over a period of time that leads to the inability to perform things like thinking, things like processing information, things like memory, and eventually, in some cases, it deals with your mood, and your emotions, it messes up with your emotions and your mood. And sometimes it deals with your, your bodily functions, like bladder control, in more advanced cases. So that's, and it's usually something that occurs with age and brain damage. Now we're beginning to see younger and younger cases, people in their 40s getting dementia, so that's a big problem. It's usually, when I was in medical school, 80. We found, we used to think dementia was a problem of the white, the old, decrepit white man. That was, that was what we thought about dementia. 80, and at the very least, 80. Right? But now that's changing a great deal, like I said. So, with Alzheimer's disease, so 
So Alzheimer's disease is a subset of dementia, albeit a very big subset. So about 70 to 80% of all dementia cases are actually Alzheimer's disease. Now in Alzheimer's disease, what they're seeing is that it's a progression as a result of damage, brain damage to, to the cells. But the most conspicuous thing they, they see are what are known as the plaques, the amyloid plaques. These are certain white protein uh, molecules that appear in the brain and actually affects or damage this process right here. So the plaques appear in the brain and they shut down the synapses. And it's the interesting thing about Alzheimer's disease, I'm not sure if that's a good word to use because it's such a terrible thing, is that with Alzheimer's disease, there's a gradual shutting down or a pruning of this whole network. It's basically shutting these things down. That's why you heard the term progressive. Because mm -hmm. first of all, it starts maybe he just doesn't remember your name, and then he remembers, and then he doesn't remember, and then he remembers to, I can't get out of bed anymore. He can't even swallow his food, he can't even chew his food. You have to remind him to chew his food. He can't, she can't comb her hair, and eventually uh, pneumonia, and unfortunately there's death. But what happens is that there's a gradual shutting down of this network over a period of time. For some people it's two years, for some people it might take as long as 10 years. But that is what happens. There's a shutting down. Again, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. We now know that it's over a period of time, a lot of it as a result of damage. Either damage from what we do or don't do, or damage from basically exposure to certain environmental toxins over a period of time. For instance, what they call them the yellow, the pits, the burn pits, burn pits and the burn pits, and Middle East, and the Middle East, East. yes. That's a huge problem. Yeah. Just exposure to those things. And yeah, out in the literature, you can't complain, you can't say, you can't file for, you know, <laughs> accommodations and all that. Yeah, they're the fight and win a war. And so we unfortunately have sacrificed a lot of people uh, because we didn't know any better. But hopefully that is changing. Uh, I have a, uh, yes, a question. Is it so that I hear sometimes um, people, especially mainly seniors, they have surgery. Yeah. Uh, they have surgery, and it seems like it pushes them uh, into, I guess, Alzheimer's or dementia or memory loss. I'm working with a lady now, and she was fine, and then all of a sudden she has surgery, periods of time over a surgery, and now she's having problems with her memory. She so has several surgeries. I'm sorry. She had several surgeries? Well, over the course of a uh, year, of years, she was in an uh, automobile accident. Uh -oh. And so um, she told me that she's having memory problems, and I don't know if it's dementia or not, but I did tell her that she might want to speak to her doctor about it, and I told her that it's a, it's a scan that you can do, right? It's a scan yeah. that they can do to determine if it's, you know, if it's Alzheimer's or if it's something else. Yeah. But she is, she is older, I think she's in her 70s, so. And I was just curious, could that having surgery push you into uh, Alzheimer's? Yeah. Don't, don't they say that anesthesia, uh, times, yes. they try to explain okay. anesthesia now? Because when they've done the surgeries, and they can yeah, like do a general, but then any other one can do a general. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that, that was what I, that's okay. a very good point. The exposure to anesthesia, is, anesthesia is not a benign thing at all. I mean, you're, you're, putting, mm -hmm. sorry, you're actively putting chemicals into the lungs and into the into the brain. And if it's repeated over a period, over several times, like, your, mm -hmm. like she did, like she had, yes, there's a big risk. There's a big mm -hmm. risk. Same thing with chemotherapy. Same thing with oh. very strong drugs as well. Mm -hmm. um, even some, some, some not so strong drugs. I mean, another way on the topic of we're not, on, we're not on, on food yet, but um, laxatives. Something as simple as laxatives. laxatives? Yes. Oh. Could increase your risk of um, memory problems and dementia. And there's a whole process. Well, they stop taking them. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, 
it affects some absorption of some, some key nutrients for your brain, like vitamin B12, amongst other things. And also, the, um, like this, even these simple cough syrups that have uh, Benilin, I think, is it Benadryl? Benadryl. 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 Benadryl and some other things, they are looking at those two as well. Mm. My, my funny is epilepsy, you know, like the, um, what is the, um, like, you know, Mucinex, whatever, they say some chemical in there that, that you know, with the epilepsy, they treat yeah. it with the brain, you're saying, you know. Well, epilepsy is Yeah, but okay, but the, some, with, with the brain, though, the, the vaccine, you know, chemicals in there that causes, you know, because it's mm. seizure. Mm. Are you saying that they, they have seizure and they're taking a drug that makes it worse? Well, that's what, when, when he was having a respiratory thing. Okay. And it says on there, then the neurologist said, no, don't, don't give it to him, do a more natural, holistic, yeah. because with the chemicals in there, yeah. in the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm putting together a whole list of um, drugs. I mean, it's, it's out there, but it's exactly why these drugs can lead to dementia, or memory loss, or brain problems. I think people need to know about them. Oh, yeah. Need to be yeah. aware of them. So, you know, we're too willy-nilly about drugs. So I just get a drug and just take care of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to start being more aware about how these things affect our brain. Right. I have a talk I have online called Dementia's Dirty Dozen. And basically it goes through the 12 major causes or pathways to dementia. And I made it kind of cute, so I can, they all start with the letter I, I. So like infection, injury, illnesses, uh, even isolation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a big one. We're just beginning to find that out too. Uh, yes, ma'am. Because well, you've heard me the blue zones. The, yeah, 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 yeah. They're talking about the number one worst thing I could use was the isolation, social isolation. Yes. That's the number one killer of people more so than. Yes. Um, there was a, a, an 80 year old India study in Harvard where they looked at the kids when they were undergrads and they followed them throughout what, 70 plus years. And they said, what was the number one thing that. Um, kept these people, uh, the ones who were healthy, who lived long, who were well adjusted, who were also financially uh, well off. Mm -hmm. The one thing that they pointed to was good quality relationships. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that they mm -hmm. saw as the reason for their success, their health, their happiness. Mm -hmm. So isolation is a big, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm an introvert, I'm more of a loner, believe it or not. And um, I, I, when, I, when I saw that, I was like, man, I need to change my ways, you know, I don't want to get this thing. <laughs> so, very important. Okay, great, hit the books. So the reason why I brought this up again too is that what, what, what reading does and what your brain desires, you know, it, it demands, it requires stimulation. It requires challenge. It requires yeah. to learn new things. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you're not, if you're not given, constantly giving your brain something to work on, it's going to get bored and it's going to start shutting down. It's not going to be making these synapses like, it, like, it, like they should. And, it's, and the last thing you want to do is give Alzheimer's disease a chance to take hold or give Alzheimer's disease an excuse. So, your brain is constantly changing. I mean, right now you're not going to be the same. Your brain is not going to be the same as it was when when um, I first came into this room, because you would have learned, I hope, a few new things, yes. and, then, and that, that that will show up in the substance of your brain. If somebody looked at your brain before and after, they would see a difference. Why? Because it has started making new synapses and new connections based on what the new information you've learned. You've got to keep giving your brain that privilege of learning and growing. That's why connecting, coming to meetings like this, traveling to new places, reading books. So books is just one of the ways, but it's really, really important. So one of the things they found out is, is that people who have had about 16 years of formal education, that's from K, K, K to uh, maybe your first degree, they tend to be less likely I'm not saying they don't have because we know rocket scientists and physicians and everybody and everybody in between have had dementia. But it seems to uh, confer some protection just being mentally active, especially by reading books. 
because it's better than watching TV or listening here. You, when you read some stuff, your brain has to work extra hard to take the words in, make sense of the words, and file it away somewhere, as opposed to just passively watching a show or TV. So it's very important to read. Okay? Um, yeah. Yes. It is different from sustained reading. Although um, it is tasking too, it's stimulating too. Mm -hmm. But with, with sustained reading, again, it, yeah, especially if it's a, a book or a novel or something stimulating, you are creating a mental picture in your mind as you're reading. And if like a story, if it's a story or a novel, yeah, you're creating a continual story and image in your brain. That's will help to, sh to shift and improve the synapses. Uh, with uh, stimulating games like games and all that, I mean, it's just, you stimulate, boom, some, new, some flashes here and there, and then you go back to where you were before. But when you're reading, you're learning stuff, and you're building upon what you've learned before, so you're more like you're building something in your brain. Does that answer your question? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, I totally agree. It's, it's even better than not taking it on your PC or your, your laptop as well because there's that connection with the brain to the pen that, that typing does not come close to. Yeah, it's almost like you're using your fingers to program it into your thinking and your memory. Great, I love it. You guys are a great, you know, this is a great uh, discussion going on. But out that's basically about smoking. And honestly, when I look at this, I'm like, really? Uh, do we really have to do a whole talk on, on, on quitting smoking? Anyway, um, smoking does a few, quite a few things. So you want to avoid, you want to, uh, you want to encourage people to stop smoking. I, I know it can be hard if you've had a habit of smoking for a long time. But are you raising your hand? Are you raising your hand? Okay, I, I wasn't sure. It's, it's okay, you're totally fine. Do, do whatever you want, man. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that it's, I, I, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't ignoring you. I was just thinking that I haven't smoked yet, I did have a Okay. Good for you. Give her a round of applause, please. Good job. Very good. What 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 took you I mean, how did you stop? <laughs> Lots of cleanses, did you say? Classes. Classes on uh, to quitting smoking. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tobacco. Tobacco free smoke. Yeah. Did you try nicotine patches or anything? Yes, they made skin. Yeah. That's an issue, yeah. About five years, that's pretty good. Good for you. Good job. Good job. So, among the things, what smoking does, I didn't draw this here, I mean, maybe I should, but um, your brain needs. A lot of blood flow. Okay, so your brain is like two percent of the body, of the total weight of the body, and yet it takes over twenty percent. In fact, as soon as the heart pumps out blood, the first thing place it goes to after the heart itself is the brain, mm -hmm. and twenty percent of that goes to the brain right off the bat. It needs a lot of blood flow and a lot of oxygen, and of course with blood flow, you get oxygen, you get water, you get, you know, you get the nutrients, the energy and all that. The brain is an energy hog. It's, it, it just sucks it in. So if you're not, if, if there's any, if, if the blood flow is compromised in any way, then, then the brain cells, the brain will suffer. And the parts of the brain that are the worst energy hogs include the memory centers because there's so much work in the brain that's being done. What, what smoking does, what smoking does is that it actually, amongst other things, it actually um, narrows the pipe, narrows the blood vessels, so blood doesn't flow as well. 
Okay, so if you have, if it's supposed to be this, this wide, it ends up being yay wide. It narrows the blood vessels. Amongst, in addition, it also creates chemicals. The smoking puts chemicals in your blood that damage the brain and damage the blood vessels as well. So you, over a period of time, now there are some people who are lucky who don't, I mean, uh, the person that comes to mind is George Burns. Anybody know who that is? Do you have a comedian? Yes. Yeah. You want to talk about that? <laughs> Shows you how old, how old he is. I mean, he was, he died, I think it was over 100 when he died. And he, and he, and I think someone told him, you know, you, you really shouldn't be smoking a cigar so, so much. So and he's like, yeah, that's, that's what my doctor told me. He died, and the doctor after him told me that. He died too. And I can't listen like three or four doctors who told him the same thing, and they, and they all died before him. Now, he is an anomaly. Uh, I mean, he was, he probably had great genes. He, I mean, yeah, he was rich too, and he probably had a very, very good healthcare place to take care of him. So they, they caught the problems early, but for most other people, it's probably not a good idea. All right. I, I have a question. Yeah. You were just talking about um, smoking, how it really affects the brain and other things. So I will take into consideration is not only um, cigarette smoking, yeah. but you also have people that are dealing with mental health yeah. or substance abuse. I would take in consideration, if I'm, not, if I'm not right, that that also affects the brain uh, as far as pushing it if I'm right, into all hunger. Yes. That's the part that we were saying. I yes. think that because it, uh, because with substance abuse, it, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a disease, and from what my understanding is, it affects the brain. Yes. So when you talk about Alzheimer's and dementia and other chemicals as far as cigarettes and everything, I would think substance abuse and mental health, all that is tied into the brain that pushes everything into Alzheimer's. Yes, and, absolutely. You are well, well said. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes, um, I, um, vaping, yeah. marijuana. Uh, what's the what's the thing again? They do what else? Vaping, marijuana, smoking, and all the other things, and drugs, and those mm -hmm. illicit drugs. Yeah, they all have some some effect on the brain for sure. In fact, marijuana. I mean, I I know that there are some some cases in which you got to use marijuana, like seizures. Mm -hmm. Seizure disorders and other brain problems, and so it's a trade-off. Sometimes you gotta do it, but no, also it's gonna affect certain parts of the brain as well. By marijuana specifically, it reduces the blood flow to the memory centers of the brain, so it can it can affect your memory, or it can affect your reaction time if you're driving on the road and there's somebody sprints across the road. Your reaction time will not be as someone a swift as someone who does not who is not a, a smoker. Or a user. Yeah. So there are always trade off trade offs obviously. Yeah. Where's the other guy who who, who helped me out with that? Does um, you are heavily outnumbered here, Pastor. Uh, the, well, well, he's, he's on, on the, the door. door. He's yeah, the, yeah, no, it's always like that. Yeah, yeah. He's at the door? He's at the door because we keep it locked. Security. 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 Oh, Security. oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I'm like, if I say something wrong, I mean, I no. need some protection here, no. Pastor. No. <laughs> no, you from Baltimore, you know, you just have to have security. That's all, so he's at the door. I do, I do. There's it. a lot of women in here tonight. I have a question. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Um, my question is okay, besides um, smoking, yeah. how about popping pills and alcohol? Do that um, dry your brains up and do all that holy? Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, alcohol. I mean, obviously, there's there's a place for alcohol. Is like almost just like a social thing, right? I mean, people get get together and have fun and all that. Uh, but the, the the research is out. It's, it's it's bad for the brain. It's bad for the brain. Yes, ma'am. With the um, increase in the number of people that are using marijuana, yeah. Is 
Absolutely. There's a lot of research done that showing that uh, continual use recreational. That's why I say medicinal or marijuana, there are certain cases where you gotta use it just to maybe to control seizures and all that. But recreational, just for the heck of it, or you just want to, to calm down after a hard day's work, or you just want to de stress and use marijuana. Mm -hmm. The research says it's, it's damaging the brain. It's, Yes, so there's there's one more, I think the T, THC and then the, the two two main ones. The T, I think the THC is the one that very stimulates that stimulates um, the brain more. And then the other the CBD, the other the other one basically helps with the brain. So they are trying to genetically modify and improve and, and grow so that it's more the one that helps the brain than the one that stimulates the brain. So you, you, there there are some that really work much better. So you have to find out which ones are which. So, but what you're saying now, so the difference between the two, one being less, you don't mean it's too much less chemically induced, you know, you know what I'm saying, the two, how do I explain this? One's more heavily chemical. One is bad, one is good. Right. Let's, let's just use that, okay? Mm -hmm. What's the question? No, but you're saying, so both, the other one you're saying, which is guess what gives more procedures, they do. Yeah. That's, Technically, it's harmful with the other one with the chemicals towards the brain. You said it's basically it's harmful. The, um, the one that yeah. helps with seizures and brain disorders, like autism and all those things, mm -hmm. is better. Then like, there's the THC, I believe, I'm probably mixing up. The THC is just like the stimulatory one, the one that gives you a high. Right. That's, that's, what, that's what you want to avoid. But the other one, it's not as versed as far as damage to the brain? Yeah, it's not as, yeah. It, 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 I mean, it still has. Damage, but not as bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively a lot, lot better. Okay, uh, follow your heart. Wow, my Okay, follow your heart. Evidence shows that risk factors for cardiovascular disease and stroke, such as obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes, negatively affect your cognitive health. Take care of your heart, and your brain just might follow. Okay, so we, we kind of mentioned diabetes. One of the problems with diabetes, high blood sugar, is that the sugar damages the brain. We also know that with hypertension, uncontrolled hypertension, this is so important for us folks, because again, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but we have, we're more prone to hypertension. Mm -hmm. And the drugs that are used for us are different from the ones that are used for white people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can't give a white person, or you can't give a black person what's to give a white person. It might harm the black person. Okay, so this is not about racism. Okay, this is this is just about uh, how our bodies work. It cannot give us the same pill. That's why I keep on. That's why I'm really upset that we're not when they're talking about things like Alzheimer's disease and dementia. That way, they're not. Someone isn't uh, really kind of talking about the differences. So you can't just blanket say everybody do this. You got to those nuances, those distinctions are important for us to know about. And sometimes it's hard, especially for all of us blacks. I see I have patients who are like four or five different medications just to try and control that one thing, hypertension. Mm -hmm. And because the doctor doesn't know that maybe uh, as a black patient they're different, so they're not familiar with them. The other, the other problem is that they don't know that there are also other natural things that your body might be lacking that is causing the hypertension. Like for instance, magnesium, mm -hmm. potassium, certain B vitamins and certain certain other nutrients, uh, we tend to be more lacking in these things. We're certainly more lacking in potassium as black people. We're more lacking in magnesium, whether it's our genes or whether it's our diet. What we know about potassium and magnesium is that they help to relax the blood, blood vessels and allow blood to flow better. So I was talking about how nicotine and smoking can, can constrict the blood vessels. Well, things like uh, potassium and magnesium opens, opens the blood vessels up. So blood flows better. And if blood is flowing better, your, your, your blood pressure drops. Um, the other thing too that helps with blood pressure is exercise. Regularly exercise, it helps to open up the blood vessels. That's why, again, why we should be. And I, I see this as a problem, and I want to say it with love. 
we don't as a people, we're not as um, active. Especially after we turn 40, we're not as active. And we don't. Huh? For some, I know. But what, what I'm saying is that if you look at it as a group, yeah. uh, if you take an average of okay. the activity levels of our group, as opposed to the white group, you see that it's not as big as it's not as big. I see it so I'm in Baltimore now. That's one of the top five parks. Parks. Do you call it parks? Recreational parks? Right. Like, park, right. like, park. like Central yeah. Park in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. Baltimore is one of the top five in the nation. Did you know that? It has one of the top five best parks in the nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. Have you been there before? The park itself. Mm -hmm. The park is beautiful. And I go there, especially during the summer, go there and see everybody's running around and skipping toes and uh, their families are coming. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, swimming pool, there's baseball, it has everything, baseball, football, it has everything. And I go there and, and it's suddenly, it's suddenly hit me. I'm like, where are the black folks? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Everybody's outside, it's packed. You cannot even find a place to park. Guess where, the only place I saw black folks. Oh, yeah. basketball court. Those are the brothers, right? Yeah. The brothers. Yeah. And um, I go to Troy. Uh, I don't go there as much. Okay. You know. I'm sorry. It's called Patterson Park. Is it East Baltimore? East Baltimore. Is it East Baltimore? Two six zero Baltimore. Okay. It's massive. It's huge, but yeah, I'm telling you. It's very nice. So, yeah, very nice. Yeah, very nice. And even the, even the two black people I saw, they were fully clad. They were all covered from top to bottom. I mean, we've gone we from top to bottom, but. Um, <laughs> but well, they, like they weren't like exposing as much of their skin as they should be. Right. And my whole point is you've got to expose your skin to the sun. And I think we, and this is not just in the US. Nigeria as well. I see the same thing. Let's, let's, cover, let's cover themselves up. It's like we're almost afraid of the sun. And guess what? We need the sun the most. Mm -hmm. More than white people. Do. Yeah. So it's a great mystery of life. Because uh, a white person can go out in the sun and within 15 to 20 minutes they would have, they would make their, their skin would make enough vitamin D mm -hmm. to last them the whole day. A black person, of course, depending on how dark a person yes. is, I mean, she would probably do a lot better than me, for instance. Mm -hmm. Or you would do a lot better than me. But they say anything from six to ten times the length of time of 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. To, we have spent ten, ten times more, more time in the sun to get the same amount of vitamin D mm -hmm. that she would, that, that she made. But people don't know this. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know this. If I were to check your vitamin D levels, I guarantee you, most of you would be below the, the normal. Mm -hmm. I take vitamin D every day. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. Most doctors tell you, yeah, this, that's the, the easy way. Yeah. It's vitamin D3. That's what you're D3, doing. not D2. Yeah, three. Now, doctors would prescribe, what, 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 when, when the doctor prescribes, it's usually D2. Because mm -hmm. that's the one you can get you can get from the prescription. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, D3 is better and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it's more available and you can get it off Amazon. You can you can yeah. go to Sam's Club and you can get like six months worth yeah. for, for less than ten bucks. Okay, yeah. But they'll tell you to pay like fifty bucks and for the same, same get thing. Over the counter. Uh, the doctor's approval. That that's a big uh, uh, soapbox of mine, this whole D3 thing. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, it should be a <laughs> if I were keen for a day. I was make sure all black people took vitamin D right. supplements mm -hmm. from the age of, age of 20. Because I tell you, many of these things we're talking about, these diseases that we're talking about, vitamin D has a role to play in many yeah. diseases. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I learned that. Including yeah. cancer. Yeah. yeah. By the way, vitamin D helps to, from birth, uh, the development of the brain, the maturation of these synapses, the, the formation of these networks. Mm -hmm. The protection of the brain. I mean, D plays a huge, even memory formation and memory retention. But I mean, D plays a huge role.
It's a fear of low invite indeed. You can imagine all the different things that is affected. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why when I talk to people, I always recommend when they go in for a physical, is to always, because you, you know, a physical, they're not going to check it unless you request it. Exactly. So I always ask, especially exactly. if you have a lot of health challenges or even have health exactly. challenges, I always say recommend that you get your vitamin D3, uh, vitamin D check. Because a lot of times people have the deficiency yes. and they don't even know it. Yeah. And then when they find out they have a, a, a deficiency, then the doctor, depends on how low it is, can, like you said, recommend, um, give them a prescription or they'll, tell them or, or, right, or they'll tell them to go get the supplement over the counter, which is vitamin D3. But like you said, dark skinned people, African American, obviously with doctor's approval, should be on vitamin D3 over the counter. I strongly, well said, mm -hmm. very well we said. I mean, over here you can check your vitamin D levels. I, I beg of you to check your vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it is because, because winter is coming, and guess what? Yeah, even if the worst, even if the worst, yeah, yeah, bundled up, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Even if you in winter. Even if you go out butt naked in the sun, you're not going to make vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No. Yeah. yeah. Because of the, 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 the way that all the earth is tilted in the winter. Mm -hmm. The rays of the sun that are needed to make vitamin D are not going to reach the earth. So you might be seeing the sun shining in its glory, wow. but you're not making vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So it's the ones you made during the summer, all that time when you were running away from the sun, that whatever you were able to make during that time is what's going to carry you through the winter. Mm -hmm. and, it, and most of us are deficient during the winter, so it just mm -hmm. throws you into the negative. So, mm -hmm. very important. What we're supposed to be taking? D3? D3. Yes, right. Absolutely. I have a question about The deficiency in the capital blood test? Yes, so the, the range is 30 to 100. 30 to 100 milligrams, uh, nanograms per mil, but just look. That's a good number. Most, like I said, most of you will probably be below, be below 30. And the doctor, if you're over 30, if you're like 31, 32, the doctor may say it's, it's okay. That's why I'm going to tell you now that they're beginning to see that optimal amounts, we need to say 40 to 60. I have a problem with that because, again, the range is 30 to 100. They are finding out, and we're going to get to sleep in a minute, but they find out that um, people who have sleep problems, like mm -hmm. sleep apnea, and they're waking up at night all the time. When they start treating them with vitamin D, vitamin D helps with sleep as well, by the way. But it's only the doctors who know what they're doing. Say it's only when you get to about 60 that they now see improvements in sleep problems. So doctors say, you're okay at 30, but your, your sleep may be messed up. No one's okay, addressing that because you're okay. not having sleep out there. So it's only when you get to about 60. Now I checked mine, I was 83 last year. It's probably lower than that this year. But I know that I still have work to do because the doctors that really know what they're doing, they're treating dementia, they say that you should be closer to 100. But now, you have to request that. They're not just automatically going to do it. When yeah. you go to your doctor, you, you have to request that, that they check that. So I would, if, I, if I was king for a day again, I would insist on the rule that not all doctors, mm -hmm. if you have a black patient, you must, must mm -hmm. check their vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. There are too many people, I, I gotta tell you, I mean, I'm just trying to control myself now, but there are too many people who are needlessly suffering mm -hmm. simply because of that one thing. Just right. that one simple thing right. that can yeah. change so easily. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying, I've been trying to push this on the housing, but like I said, I love them to, to bits. What they're doing is fantastic. But again, I, mean, I keep saying it, and they keep saying, well, you need more research, you need more research. I'm like, what, what more research do you need? This is connecting the dots. Yeah. This is clear as day. Low vitamin D levels mm -hmm. puts your brain at risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. Black people have the lowest of all the populations. Mm -hmm. Those are incontrovertible facts. Mm -hmm. Those are iron class. There's a set in stone. So what else what else do you want me to what else do you want to find out? <laughs> What else do you want to find for? What, what, what was the research there for? There's nothing else to say. I don't, I don't get it. Okay. And by the way, the heavier you are, the more weight you have on your body, the older you are, 
the darker you are, and if, if you have other conditions like diabetes, or you have a chronic illness, all those push your need for vitamin D even further and further up. So if they're saying you need like a, a, thousand, a thousand international units a day for the average person, you would need three or four times as much as what the average person requires because of all those factors I just mentioned. Right. Respect. Okay. So you're gonna need more. Alright, who's gonna check their vitamin D levels soon? Who's gonna do it? Alright, good. Love it. Love it. Very good. Alright, heads up, brain injury. Okay, yep. you you wanna you wanna avoid brain brain injury. So in my talk about called the dementia still he does it. And by the way, if you, if you want to uh what we are including on our YouTube channel because we're creating a YouTube channel specifically for blacks. It's called Blacks and Dementia, where we're going to address this one topic. If you want to be included in that list, so we can send you uh, notifications. Mm -hmm. I might need to share paper uh, later for the days over, so we can. So we can. Uh, we just need you. Once you, you, you send your email address and your phone number, if you want to be included in that list, and then we'll let you okay. let you know. Uh, so I, I mentioned that because dementia duty does an injury, that's what you have here. So that's another high. So repeated injuries, falls, that's why these kids who are uh, playing soccer and football and all those things, they also are at risk if they have repeated injuries. And you probably, did you all see the movie The Concussion? There was this movie by Will Smith. I, I don't like him now because of what he did, but that was it. That, I will not. I will not watch. I will not watch another movie of Will Smith. I promise you. I will not. Not. I mean, that's that's the it's, it's brought shame to 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 us, and that was that, that was that was wrong. Well, it's, it's not a question of forgiveness. I mean, he's just one of the actors. I, I won't follow. That's all. <laughs> I'm just, just not his. I have no interest in his movies again. No. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. That's another. That's another that's another big altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so fuel, so, so let's talk about eating. Fuel upright. Uh, how much time do I have? You're fine. Are you sure? You're fine. Uh, I mean, this is the one time you got me, so we've we got to hit, hit hard and run off, right? Uh, it's like a two hour trip to get here, I promise you. And there's a lot of traffic on the road for some reason. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. And it's hard to way around here. Yeah, yeah. They had to re redirect me a couple of times. Oh. Uh, oh. Fuel upright. Eat a healthy and balanced diet that is lower in fat and higher in vegetables. Easy to say, right? Mm. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> And fruits to help reduce the, car the risk of cognitive decline. Although research on diet and cognitive function is limited, certain diets, including, check this out, are you ready for this? Mediterranean yeah. and Mediterranean slash dash. Mm -hmm. Dietary approaches to stop hypertension may contribute to risk reduction. Does anybody know what that means? Uh, yeah. The Mediterranean yeah, diet? Me yeah, me neither. Yes, yes. <laughs> No, I'm just, just kidding. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Is what now? Yes, yes, yes. What? Is it not tasty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no fried food in there, right? <laughs> For what we're used to eating, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, so it, it, I mean, in all fairness, that is a healthy thing. Yes. And it does study after study after study mm -hmm. to show there's been improvement, whether in diabetes or hypertension cognitive health and so on. Because the because the nutrients, the nutrients are in the vegetables especially. Mm -hmm. Not just the fruits and all the vegetables especially. Those are where the, 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 the nutrients that help to nourish your brain. Mm -hmm. And the raw the rawer they are, yes. the better the nutrients. When we start cooking them and frying them, yeah, getting rid of the nutrients. Besides that, with all this GMO and agricultural practices, we're losing a lot of the nutrients. So I say, this is my this is my, my my stance. You want to do you want to be very commonsensical about your eating. You want to you want to reduce your starch. 
uh, your starchy foods like the rice, the potatoes. Um, sweet potatoes, in my opinion, have a lot more health benefits than, mm -hmm. uh, than white potatoes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You like yeah, to put it Don't take that away, huh? Please don't. Yeah, he didn't say sweet potato pie now. He said the no, sweet potato. Sweet potato. Well, I know, I'm sure. I want to make sure. You know, not the sweet potato pie. <laughs> yes, it does have That's pie. right, no pie. No pie. No, this is raw But mm -hmm. I gotta tell you though, the sweet potatoes I find here are nothing like what we have in Nigeria. Oh my god, and they're so soggy yes. and soft. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I know, the ones in Nigeria are like yams, like strong yams. And I tell you, when I take it, I mean, I looked in vain over here. I mean, so I'm very, I have a very sensitive body and brain because I mean, I, I, I take, I, I, I use myself as a guinea pig, I test all kinds of foods, all kinds of foods and nutrients and supplements and all that. But sweet potatoes, when I start taking them, I'll wake up, when I wake up, I'll take them at night, which is, I mean, you, you want to, you know, another thing is like, you don't want to eat much before you go to bed. It's, mm -hmm. Because it's, 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 uh, it takes away from the energy your brain needs to recover and it, it, it shunts it to the digestive system because your body has to deal with all that food over there. So it's, they say it's better to, there's a standard thing now, uh, three hours before you go to bed, you shouldn't eat anything. Mm. It's tough to do for some people, but that's what we're finding out is the best thing to do. Because again, like I said, your know, energy goes to your guts, but meanwhile, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in your brain while you're sleeping. The memories, the repairs, the detoxification, the brain does a lot of work. And if you start diverting the energy from the brain to the gut, that's not a good thing. But having said that, when I started taking sweet potatoes at night, I'd wake up in the morning feeling sharp and healthy and full of energy. No, I wouldn't feel hungry. I, 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 I had a meal breakfast anyway. But, um, but I could tell the difference. And my brain seemed clearer when I was thinking about it. Again, it's, I don't feel the same way with the sweet potatoes I eat over here. Oh. The, the reds, those red ones and the orange ones, the ones back in Nigeria are like white on the inside, like yams. And they're like full of fiber, which is another thing. So let me get back to this fuel of rice. Some of the key principles. One, you want to reduce your intake of starchy foods. Mm -hmm. You want to increase your intake of fiber. Mm -hmm. Foods that have a lot of fiber, I guess over the leafy, leafy greens and mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. things. I, the whole foods used to have this fiber, but now I think they're out of stock. But I search around, so uh, I mean, I, I'm single, so I, I don't, I, I, um, I can't be cooking, my mom is not cooking for me all the time, so I try to cheat, cheat a little bit. The so whole foods has this fiber, it's like flakes, and I just take, like, I would buy it and then use it. I'll take like a tea, tablespoon or two at night, take it before I go to bed. And what fiber does, it feeds your good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Alright, it feeds the, what they call the probiotics, and it helps them. When you feed your good bacteria with what they want, they in turn would help your brain, help your digestive system, mm -hmm. help yeah. reduce inflammation, help your blood pressure and all these things. Mm -hmm. That fiber does not feed you, it feeds the good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Have you, anybody heard about the good feed? Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah but the, you have a lot of bacteria mm -hmm. in your guts. That's yeah. where it all starts. That's where it all, that's where all the healthy things are. There are bad bacteria and there are good bacteria. Depending on what you feed your body with, so if you're feeding your body with all this sugary stuff and fried foods and all this junk, fast foods, there are certain kinds of bacteria that enjoy that, but they are the bad kinds. So when they eat that, what you, what you feed yourself with, they'll eat that up and they'll start causing all kinds of problems, mm -hmm. including inflammation in your body, which can affect your brain and so on and so forth. On the contrary, you feed, you, if you give things like fiber, like fiber, they say it's like a seven, this is like a seven course meal for the good bacteria. So I'm just describing the bad bacteria. The good bacteria, you give the good bacteria fiber and veggies and all those things, they in turn will digest that fiber and make some really good stuff. I've heard about the keto diet before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. amongst the things that the good bacteria make are the ketone bodies. 
that you are working so hard to do and they are, they are um, depriving yourself of certain foods and all that, your good bacteria can actually make those ketone bodies for you. And once you make ketone bodies, your brain is on a high. The brain loves ketone bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so fiber, I cannot emphasize fiber enough. You've got to have fiber. You've got to have fiber. And so if you can't do it the, the hard way, which is cooking and preparing and all that, then I strongly suggest you find a good supplement that's not pills, the powder itself. That's what I was going to ask. Is that a good um, don't get don't don't get the one that is that is. I guess it's free. That's the one you should not get. <laughs> you discuss this because it has it has has it has other yeah, has has stuff in it. Stomach. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the one you should not get. Well, then is there anyone that doesn't have it? It's unsweetened. That doesn't. Right. Well, you just said it right. But but they put it they, they put it. You know what? I don't know if they've done. They've made a difference now. But they, they put a sugar substitute in it. Okay, I'll check it. Mike. Check it. Aspartame. You all want yeah, to stay, stay away. away from that. All this diet, coke, and diet, that. whatever, whatever. Stay away it's from it. It's bad. It's really bad for you. Oh. Stay away from it. Stay from it. Yeah, stay away from it. Oh, my goodness. We we'll switch it up. She might not notice the difference. Yeah, she might. She Forget might not notice the difference. Don't even know what she sees, she might not see it. She might not know. Yeah, but no, none of that's good. For so some of them also stick to that stuff. Other some not. That's not good for you. Yeah. Well, now that you know, I mean, just you never know what your genes can tolerate. Your mom clearly has some great genes. She's, yeah. 90, she's 95, so I mean, what can I say? All right. Uh, all right, catch some Zs. Not getting enough sleep due to conditions like insomnia. So that's another I, my daddy doesn't, insomnia. Or sleep apnea may result in problems with memory and thinking. This is there's a, a, a huge amount of research now that's coming out about the importance of sleep and how lack of quality sleep, so you might sleep for eight hours, but you may not have the quality sleep, and how that can affect your ability to think, your mood, your behavior, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Vitamin D yeah. plays a huge role mm -hmm. in the quality. So just a quick example. Um, when you sleep, it's not all the same phase. It's not, it's not just like you close your eyes and then you wake up. Your brain takes you through a process. It's kind of like driving, driving a car, right? Anybody remember stick shifts? Okay, some some of me do. I I learned how to drive using a stick shift. Right, good. So you start from gear one, you start from zero, you go to gear one, you start moving, then gear two, you get faster, gear three, and then on the highway gear four or gear five. And then all of a sudden you come to a stop and you have to come back to zero and then gear one, gear two. So it's a cycle, right? The same thing with sleep. Like four or five times a cycle. The brain goes through a cycle and each phase is important for certain things. One phase is important for memory, consolidation. Another phase is important for repair. Another phase is important for detoxification. Because your blood, your brain has to detoxify itself. It has to get rid of all the junk and the impurities during the night. So if you're not going through these phases like you should, there will be a problem. Maybe in memory, maybe in mood something else. And guess what? Vitamin D is what helps you shift through those phases. Yeah, but also too, the way that you can tell, if I'm not mistaken, that if you're going through those phases of getting a good night's sleep, yeah. is that you're normally going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time every morning and you're feeling energized. Energized and ready to start your day. But if someone is going to bed at night and they're not getting the proper sleep, uh, and when they wake up, uh, and they're not waking up on the same time, I guess I would say, is that that's when you could tell that the body was restless through the night, and that's when they didn't go through those stages. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
Uh, you lost the, okay, you so when a person up? goes to bed at night, a person should be going to bed every night at the same time and wake it up at the same time. Yeah. So if they're, if they're well rested, they're going through those stages. Not necessarily? Okay. All right. Well, that's what I was trying to... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not necessarily. If you're low in vitamin D, you can do all the... That's what they call sleep hygiene. So you're sleeping... Yeah, we're going yeah, to put you to bed at the right time and all that. Not necessarily. If you close it, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. If you close your eyes and then you wake up the next morning, that's not meant, that's not mean you no. had a good quality sleep when you went through the phases. If your mm -hmm. if your body doesn't have enough of the right nutrients. Well, that part of it, I know with the lack of, I mean, with the vitamin D deficiency. But if a person don't have a vitamin D deficiency and they're getting the proper rest, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. so, 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 right, because I know vitamin D plays an important role in our bodies. And, uh, and so if you're not getting the proper sleep, yeah. okay, you would be able to tell in the morning and you're saying no? No. You okay. may, you may you not, not, you may you not, might not know. know. You okay. might not know. You may not know. But if a person goes to bed and they wake it up well energized, you wouldn't say that they're going, they, they went through those stages yeah. and they're, okay, all right, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. The, fact that they, and the fact that they feel energized, yes, that's a good sign that maybe they feel better, but having energy, being energized is a subjective feeling too. Uh, they, they, may, they may be energized com compared to what? They may, be, may, they may have low energy in the past and then you have a little bit of energy more than what they had before and to them that's energized. But meanwhile, if you measure and you do a sleep test for an example, you might find out that they're missing a stage or two. And yet they will say that they, they feel energized and they feel, they feel rested. So I, other than doing a sleep test, I would say there's just a couple of things that I would say you need to do before you go to bed. One, and probably the most important thing, other than vitamin D and making sure your vitamin D levels are okay, probably the, probably the most important thing is to get a sleep eye mask. Mm -hmm. A sleep mask. The ones they give you on planes. Remember those? Mm -hmm, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> what I found out is that most people sleep. Yeah. I'm sorry? That's crazy. Really? And you go to sleep? Yeah, I one So some people have, have issues with caffeine. I, I don't have, but there are others who are highly sensitive to that. Yeah, I can, I can take caffeine before I go to bed and I'll sleep like a baby. But who knows? Maybe maybe must must sleep like a baby. Stay away from it from yeah. the house. Yeah. So, yes, okay, sir. Dr. Davis, uh, the REM, when did you, that, that, that REM sleep, when you yeah. get to that, that place where your body is uh, paralyzed? Yes. Yeah. It, does that, is that the area where the, your body starts healing itself and bringing, this, bringing things back in alignment, the thoughts, and like you said, categorizing the things that you need to put part of your lines yeah. and locations yeah. in that REM sleep? Yes, yeah. yes. So REM is rapid eye movement sleep. Right. It's called rapid eye movement sleep, very important. There's also the non-REM sleep. Um, like I said, they're all for different phases. So during the REM sleep, like you said, it's consolidating. The, the experiences of the day is making sense of them, finding them in the right places and all that. Very important. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're not getting good REM sleep, it's going to affect your brain function. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a problem. Uh, when I go to sleep, I usually have a problem. Yeah. And it's when I go to sleep, I'm wide awake. Yeah. Until the time you get to go to work or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So that's that's an issue too. Um, my first thought: vitamin your, your vitamin D levels. Yeah. You probably have not checked your vitamin D levels in a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't take vitamins. But he said, get it checked. Get it checked because you can have a low vitamin D. You can have a vitamin D deficiency. And I, that can, I can almost guarantee you, you have your vitamin right. D deficiency. Mm -hmm. I can almost guarantee you. Yeah. No, I'm not a panic man, don't get me wrong, but if I were to pay someone. <laughs> Especially oh, getting trouble sleeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's it's very typical. It's, millions of people have that problem. And it's usually that time, two o'clock, three o'clock. I don't know why it is, but it's usually that time. Part of it is you know, due to stress, they found out because your cortisol levels tend to be uh, can come alive around that time. So and and the as you grow older your cortisol levels rise, which is like a stress almost. Yeah, so if your cortisol levels are high, um, they should go down at night time. Mm -hmm. But if you're perpetually stressed, then it's gonna wake you up. It's usually around that two o'clock, three o'clock. Again, vitamin D helps to balance out stress and cortisol levels. I mean, am I, over, am I overstating this thing with vitamin D? No, am I, am I, am I doing no, 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 you're fine. <laughs> Because it, it needs to be talked about, especially um, all of it in the African American community. Because, like I said, you, you you hit it right on the nose. A lot of times people don't know, and sometimes even with the health challenges that they have, yeah. it could be due to the deficiency of vitamin D. No, I'm not saying it's due to it. I'm not saying that it definitely plays a role. Right, right, it plays a role. And if doctors have to mention it to you, you have to let them know this yeah. is what you want to get checked. Yeah, it's, it's all mm -hmm. right. It's, it's, in my mind, it's all the easiest things to fix. So back to my point, please get a sleep mask. I, I sleep with a sleep, sleep mask every time. You, you, have to, you have to be in complete darkness. No TV on, no night lights, no, just, yeah. no yeah. nothing. You gotta be in complete darkness. No tablets. No tablets. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, have a cell phone under your pillow or a tablet. It should, not be the, it should not be anywhere near your face. Or your head, same, or your same. body. It shouldn't be anywhere near. Do you know? Do you know how much hour those these things are beginning to emit? Don't be saying that. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, then put it away from the bed. Don't put it on your bed. Don't put it on your pillow. Those are emitting such powerful, powerful frequencies. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. These are powerful. These are, we're dealing with some extremely powerful equipment these days, and they're just getting more and more powerful. So you, you, you don't want to have those things, those uh, frequencies messing with your brain. Over a period of time, it just accumulates and accumulates. And that's why things break down eventually, because they just. These are things that your mother and grandmother, your, your, they never had to deal with. So take care of your mental health. This is, this is the next one. So sleep, please, please, please get a sleep mask. I really, that, that's one thing I really want to um, ask you. Yes, so it's a good sleep well. Unless you're afraid of the dark, are you afraid of the dark? No, you shouldn't be, right? Yeah. <laughs> Total darkness. Mm -hmm. Take care of your mental health. So one of the things that, okay, let me read it out. Some studies link a history of depression with increased risk of cognitive decline. So seek med medical treatment if you have symptoms of this depression, anxiety, or other mental health concerns. Also try to manage stress, okay? So one of the reasons why women tend to, they say, I gotta be careful when I say this. Yes. Are you okay? You don't say you're around. Are you sure, Pastor? <laughs> you got my back, right? I got the back. I'm like, okay. Right, you need to know. But yeah, I'm sugarcoated, man. So you got to know. Oh, gotta know. Okay, thank you. I'll say it. Uh, one of the reasons why they think women have such high rates of, of dementia is because we tend to have the emotional issues. There's a lot more with mental health, like depression and anxiety. Um, something about your genetics, whatever it is, you're more sensitive, or your brains are more sensitive to these things. And part of the reason is that as mothers and 
rulers of the house, you tend to carry, take the burden of the family on your shoulders a lot more than the men do. Yes. Right? And of course, the, the whole history of... Uh, Not in the church, though. Not in the church? <laughs> the, men, the men do it in the... <laughs> Not, not in church. <laughs> the man carries the burden. I don't know about us. I don't know how to do that. He had the pastor had to get that one out. You know he had to get that one out. So all those things, again, over a period of time, you've lost your loved ones, you've lost your kids, dealing with uh, social justice issues and so on and so forth. And this is a huge burden on a black woman, especially. And so... Again, the black woman has the highest rates of many of these problems like uh, cardiovascular disease and dementia. So I, think, I guess those emotional and mood and mental health issues, they come and com com compound the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that if you live longer, it gives that problem more time mm -hmm. on your brain. So that's one of the reasons why. So it's very important that you uh, you address some of these things. Now, I'm, I'm giving you some tools, uh, like vitamin D, again, is very important for, for, for stress. Very important. I, uh, Nigeria, there's a lot of kidnapping going on, a lot of poverty, so a lot of, we do all kinds of crazy stuff. My cousin was, who used to live with me, he was kidnapped on his way back from a journey, and uh, we all had to, I mean, it happens all the time, so we all had to get together, pay the ransom. Thankfully, he was released, because sometimes they don't, they just take the ransom money and still kill the person. <laughs> Thankfully, he was released and he came back to came back home. And then for several nights, he was waking up with what nightmares. Mm -hmm. He was stressed out. I mean, just because they, they treated him bad while they were in captivity, mm -hmm. and it was just hard. He was already dealing with hypertension before. So I just thought, well, you know what? Why don't we just give some vitamin D? And boom, you're gonna sleep like a baby. So it helps with this. I mean, I, I probably will not be able to explain everything that happened, but it was, like I keep saying, it's a key part. It's a, it plays a role in several different things. It seems to me that's the easiest thing to address. It's not a drug. It's, it, it's very hard to, 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 to be toxic. Um, so basically, just keep the you take, and if it doesn't work the first day, you take some more, and you find out what it works with. But it, uh, it certainly helps with his sleep and his mood problems. Okay. It increases your intake of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I, I will not advise you because I'm not a doctor here, but yes. Okay. That's what happens. <laughs> okay. But the women seem, Dr. Davis, it seem like they can get, release their emotions. They're able to, to get that, you know, emotionally, that feeling, and to get it off their chest where men hold it in. Yeah. And then that's further increased stress and yeah. levels. Yeah. So you're saying that that should help? I mean, it does help. But I, yeah, I was thinking that would help. But yeah. Apparently, this is too dramatic. It doesn't. I mean, I mean it, it helps some. It helps some, but not all the way. Yes, ma'am. So if you were to break it down into three main reasons why blacks have higher high rates of, of dementia than whites, and really this applies across the board, whatever you're talking about with regards to the brain, there are three main reasons. One, we have greater attacks over on our brains over a course of a lifetime. That's true. So like the mental issues, mental health issues, social issues, and environmental issues. Plus, the fact that the hypertension, uh, diabetes and this, those things on the inside. Right? Number two. Go ahead. Number two, mm -hmm. we have 
fewer defenses against these attacks. And what is the number one defense that we are lacking? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. We have fewer defenses. Other things, so like I mentioned magnesium and potassium and some other things. Like, I mean, I can give you like 10, but we don't have time. And number three, here's a big one, folks. Here's a big one. When things begin to go wrong, maybe with our memory or our thinking, we are least likely to seek and receive medical attention. Yeah. We live in denial. Mm -hmm. We say it's not happening to us. It's just, it's all in your mind. If it's a spouse that is bringing it up. By the way, one of the things that we gave you here are things to do. Um, I think one of these sheets says what to do or how to broach the topic mm -hmm. uh, to seek medical attention if your loved one has. I believe. Can you see it? Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ten steps. Ten steps to approach memory concerns. Yes. So this is really for the caregiver. Like ten steps. Yeah. It's really for the caregiver. If you begin to see problems with your spouse or your loved one, these are among the things that you want. This is how to broach the topic and begin to ask. Let's find the back page. The back page. It's just a, a caregiver, if I want to try. No. You see it? You have it now? You all have it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because it's okay. I need all time. Yeah, so the so that's a topic. So you, did you get all three now? So, yes. So give, 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 give them to me. What's number one? What's number one? What's number one? No, 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 no. Oh. The, the, the three reasons. Oh. Oh. The three reasons. The greater attacks. Number two. Um, fewer defenses. Number three. And then the denial. Don't seek medical attention. Right. Think we can draw on coral. Yes. Or, or it could be that you just, I mean, this, so in general now, like I said, this applies in general too. Um, when a person has dementia, Number one, they've probably had attacks over a period of time uh, for whatever, from whatever source, maybe toxins, maybe environmental, environmental toxins, maybe problems with their teeth because infection in your teeth mm. too can lead to dementia. I don't know if you know that. Mm. Even these um, fillings, these silver fillings mm -hmm. are a problem, very toxic too. So, so that's number one. Number two, fewer defenses. Number three, they may, they may even go for medical treatment, but they may not have the right doctor who can yeah. put two and two together and suspect and, and test for these things. Mm -hmm. A test for vitamin D, for instance. They may not have the right doctor, or their insurance may not be able to cover it, so they may not be able to, to get the full evaluation yeah. mm -hmm. to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. They may just not have a good insurance. Right. So bottom line is that they are not, for whatever reason, whether they live in denial or whether they're not living in denial, when you seek medical attention, the bottom line is that they are not being given the appropriate evaluation and treatment right. to nip the problem in the bud. Because mm -hmm. many of these problems like dementia, if you fix it early enough, or you know, if you address it properly early enough, it will not grow, it will not grow into the full-blown dementia case. Unfortunately, there is no drug that I know of that treats memory problems. There's, there's no drug available, really. Aricept, maybe, it does a little bit, but it causes a lot of the problems as well. However, there are several things that can be done to help nourish, nurture, help your brain repair itself. But these are nutrients, these are supplements mm -hmm. that the brain needs. And I mentioned one of them. Oh, what is one of them? What is one of them? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. The other ones are like vitamin B1, vitamin B12. These are, in fact, you can have dementia from just being deficient in, in B12. Just B12 alone, you can have dementia from that. Yes, ma'am. You can have dementia from B12 deficiency. How about vitamin K? Vitamin K. Is that risk of vitamin D? I'm sorry? Good question. Good question. So there's, so one of the
concerns about vitamin D is high calcium because vitamin D helps to absorb calcium mm -hmm. into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're really deficient in vitamin D, that's not a concern as much. Bottom line is that you have to get your vitamin D levels high. But some people who are not deficient and take a lot of vitamin D, um, it can increase your blood, your calcium levels. Mm -hmm. Okay. But vitamin K2, not K1, but K2. So there are some supplements that come with vitamin D3 and, K2, and vitamin K2. What K2 does is that it takes the calcium out of the blood and pushes it inside the bones. It pushes inside the bones and inside the teeth where they belong. Because you want, if you have consistently high levels of calcium, it tends to deposit on, on the inner linings of the blood vessels. So that's a great, great, great point. That's why it's always best to get your vitamin D check. Get your vitamin D check. Get your vitamin D check. Get check every so often so you would know if it is a deficiency and if it's too low, the doctor can put you on the medication. If not, they'll just tell you buy it over the counter. But uh, the K, the, yeah, check, check it all. Yeah. Even your B vitamin. Most important thing is you've got to get your D levels. Yeah. Uh, you can deal with the calcium levels later. I'm telling you, for, for most people, for most people, that is not a big, as big a concern. The calcium levels are not as big a concern because most people are really, really deficient in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And if you're really deficient in vitamin D, it's not the kind of calcium levels aren't going to be rising. Mm -hmm. you, you, want, you want to make sure. That we're, again, we're going into winter. Next month is winter. Wait, wait, wait. Are we in winter? No, next, yeah, next, month. Next, month. next month. Next month is winter. You don't want to be caught with your vitamin D levels low. Yeah, that's uh, good. Since that's we good. have greater attacks and uh, fewer defenses, so does liquid vitamin D versus the pill vitamin D capsule, GL vitamin D, which one is more active, quicker and active inside our body? That will act quicker. I know everybody is different, yeah. you know, but they said liquid. Yeah. So yeah. like it goes better within the bloodstream. And they, they, they might be right about that, but from what I've seen, the liquid one is more expensive. Yeah. So I would say, because this is for the rest of your life, folks. This isn't just what you just just take once in a while. It's every day. You gotta take it every day. Oh, take, take it every day. day. But I was taught, I, I was taught that the liquid vitamin, when I mean, you take the liquid vitamin, it absorbs in your body quicker than a pill, because the pill is going to take longer to, you know, that to right. So, yeah. I mean, that, but it's your preference, whether it's expensive, not expensive, but, I mean, some of it you can get um, in the powder, but um, I take the pill, but it was at times when I was taking the liquid, but then, you know, when your money's funny, you know, you got to get the pill. But anyway, I was taught in my nutrition classes that uh, the liquid was always better to take in that form because it absorbs quicker. I, I don't argue about it. I mean, I agree with that. But again, yeah, again, I mean, if, whatever works, just take it. So uh, what, what I what so because so I we are, our foundation addresses kids with uh, sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. uh, we have hundreds of kids all over the country that we give free of charge these things. So I put together a formulation. Uh, a charity in the U.S. paid for it. But it has vitamin D, it has vitamin C, and it has zinc. Mm -hmm. These are things for the immune system. We found out that kids with uh, sickle cell disease have very, very weak immune systems. Mm -hmm. And they were getting sick all the time. They were getting crises all the time. Mm -hmm. And do you know anybody? Does anybody know anybody with sickle cell disease? Mm -hmm. Yes. You do? I do. Okay, it's, it's a terrible thing. It's terrible. It's terrible. Is that a hereditary thing? Or yes, it's a hereditary thing. Both, both parents have to have the gene. Uh, and so, I mean, because it's a genetic thing, people just, a doctor just hands off it. But when we started looking into it, I was like, well, we can, I mean, I'm not going to finish it. Long story short, we fixed the problem. We got the formulation from India and Nigeria, and we shipped it to Nigeria. And now we're shutting it down. These kids are living normal lives. They're not having sickness, they're not having crises, they're not having pains, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're also funding a research in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, in three government hospitals because we want to make this part of the policy. We, 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 I mean, we're doing, it's just a drop in the bucket. The doctors see kids with sickle cell disease all over the nation, but unless they have data made in, <laughs> generated in hospitals from research, they're not going to change what they're doing. And what they're doing is a working, but because that is the policy, 
they do what they keep doing what they're doing, but they know it's not working. So we had to look for money. I'm still looking for money to complete the research. Now, so, so if anybody of you has a like, million dollars to throw, <laughs> to throw our way, you know, we don't have it. So we, uh, we just finalized it going out trying to put the data together. Uh, simply giving them vitamin D. Not with, enough, this is without the zinc, without the vitamin D, just the vitamin D, the results are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say, this was the cheapest form of vitamin D you could find. I mean, we were getting, we were getting from Sam's Club like a seven bucks for like 400 capsules. Seven bucks, seven bucks people, for 400 capsules. Each bottle could take care of like 10 or 20 kids for a month, okay? And it was, it, it helped them significantly. All that to say, let's stop talking about liquid or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D is a cheap thing to make, it's very cheap. Your concern should be, I got it, and I'm, I'm zero my mind. So I'm going to take this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the rest of my life. Especially you black people. You got it. You're deficient in vitamin D, and the older you are, the more deficient you're going to be. As a rule. Alright, uh, what else we got? Oh, we're almost done. Great. Buddy up. Uh, this is one area where I think black people are doing really well compared to white people. Well, in terms of connecting, we think we're, we think we're better, right? At least from an African perspective, we, when we still do that thing by this, under the moonlight, around the fire, we tell the folk stories. We probably don't do that too much. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. You, 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 but my wife is from South America. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think it's a it's a first world thing when you start to become isolated. But anyway, staying socially engaged can may may support brain health. Pursue social activities that are meaningful to you. Find ways to be a part of your local community. If you love animals, consider volunteering at a local as a local shelter. You know the babies for a white person. <laughs> it's clear to me. Um, so, again, speaking of a black perspective, I mean, we have pets, but our pets are, uh, they, they perform a role in the house. The cats have to, have to catch mice, and the dogs have to keep the thieves away. So that's the way we think. All this thing about having the dog be a third child or <laughs> one of the family is. It's a little bizarre, but I get it. <laughs> this is how it is. This is how, this is how we live in the, in, the, in, the, in the developed world. But I, I mean, it's good for the pets for sure, I guarantee you. <laughs> if you love animals, consider volunteering at a, at a local shelter. If you enjoy singing, join a local choir again, or help at an after school program. But just share activities with friends and family. If you're retired, please volunteer. You gotta volunteer. Mm -hmm. you gotta, people need your wisdom, they need your your help, your care, your perspective. You can't just be sitting down and follow the TV and mm. vegging out. So yeah, please don't do that. Yeah. That's just yeah. yeah. uh, What we're now finding out, so isolation is one of the dirty dozen. And we're beginning to find out that people live in isolated ways or are not connected. Their memories are not sharp and they are beginning to even see greater levels of shrinkage, mm. brain shrinkage. And people who live in constant isolation. We were made for connection. Yeah. We were made. It's part of what our bodies and our brains need to be um, whole. Uh, stump yourself. Uh, this is the last one. Good job, people. Finally made it to the end. Uh, challenge and activate your mind. Build a piece of furniture. Complete a jigsaw puzzle. Do, do something artistic. Play games such as bridge that make you think strategically. Challenging your, man, your mind may have short and long term benefits for your brain. So, back to what we're talking about. It's all about the synapses. It's all about making those connections and maintaining those connections. People who succumb to dementia are those who have little, their networks are not as dense. So, think about it. A tree, a forest, a tree on its own, 
compared to a tree with other trees whose root system is intertwined with other root systems. When the storm comes, the isolated tree is most likely, is more likely to topple over and be uprooted as opposed to the tree that has is interconnected with other trees. Uh, the networks, so it all comes down to networks. The more dense your network is, the more you'll be able to withstand the damage. Again, back to the 30 dozen, the damage comes from several different sources depending on your situation in life. The more you'll be able to withstand. So if you, if you had like 80% or 80, let's, let's try 80 million uh, networks, for instance, and you had an injury or brain or anesthesia or whatever it is, that may knock out, knock out 10 or 20, 20 million. You still left with 60 million. But if you started with 50 million and it knocks out 20 million, you left with 30 million. And maybe 40 million was a, was a threshold. 40 million is like, the, I'm just throwing out words now. I'm, I'm throwing out numbers now. But maybe the threshold for you not to have dementia is 40 million. But then you have, like I said, that event of surgery and then knocks off for you from 50 to 30. Oh, okay. So you're now below the threshold. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. You've got to build your networks. Yeah. You've got to work on building your networks, building your networks, building your networks, building your networks. It has to be a constant thing. And again, vitamin D is what helps to maintain that network and strengthen mm -hmm. that network. Everything we've talked about is taken away from all these 10, 10 ways to love your brain. Is that either taken away from, if you do it right, is adding to the network if you do it right. If you do it wrong, it's taken away from it. Okay. Does it make, okay. Kind of make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. All right. Yes. Well, I thank you all for listening. Thank you. So we'd love to have a picture if any if you get up to it, we can do a quick picture and if any of you wants to do like a short, I always get give people opportunity to just do a short video to say um, I liked this what is what I liked about it, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, it's your choice. You if you have up for it, I would love it. If not, I totally understand it. But questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What is the what what scans that now we what age should we ask for it? It's a very expensive, yeah. highly uh, I mean you gotta go to some of the top centers like Johns Hopkins and all that. So um, it's not it's not a routine test yet. Yeah. It's not a routine test. It is expensive because when my mother uh, well you know, I would advocate for my mother and when she started, you know, experiencing, you know, all harmless dementia or whatever, I mean, I had to make sure that, you know, get all this checked and yeah. I did. It is an expensive test and I think I had it done over the course of the years. I think it was twice that I had How much it was done. It? Oh, I can't remember the price. Because my mother had they, she had good insurance, mm -hmm. but um, it's the fact that I had to request it uh, to get it done, but because I was just telling the doctor when she had John Hopkins um, that, um, you know, things that we were noticing, you know, and I wasn't for sure, and then they did the, the scan, yeah. uh, and, you know, and then they put on the medication, but the medication, uh, it was make, seemed like it was making her worse, you know, and that's when I started trying to get a little bit of understanding of all harmers and dementia, yeah. but yeah, it seemed like it made it worse, and then it's like, okay, well, no, we, we she can't take this, yeah. you know. I think it's a, it's a, it's a PET scan, P-E-T, mm -hmm. kind of, I think there's an FMRI scan as well, yeah. but again, these are like a top level institution, mm -hmm. they don't just get them for No, yeah. 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 Unless you've got problems, you know, problems yeah. you might be able to However, in this, in what I know we have here, there's some certain things that you can ask for, I believe. Um, so the medical, so evaluate, evaluating memory and thinking problems, what to expect. So these are things that your doctor should be doing, medical history and physical exam. Mm -hmm. Then there are some specific lab tests. Again, these are, 
I mean, I, so one of the things that I talk about, and, it, and it, again, if you're interested in, in, in joining us on our, on our YouTube channel, yeah, okay. so there are about seven yeah. tests that I, and most of them, they're all blood tests, that can give you a quick view, and they are relatively cheap. Most of, most of them should be covered by insurance. They can give you like an idea of the health of your brain. One of them, obviously, is what? Is what? One of them is obviously. When I say what, you know what to say. Vitamin D. Your vitamin D levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I see she needs to She was saying it. Other <laughs> uh, other things are your vitamin B12 levels. Like yeah. I said, mm -hmm. you can have dementia just by being lacking vitamin B12. Um, I believe you can. Um, there's another one called, but called uh, yeah, your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. You want to check insulin insulin resistance because it's, mm -hmm. it's a separate thing. Blood sugar is one thing. Your levels of insulin in your body is another thing entirely. There's something called homocysteine, which is a measure of your the, how healthy your blood vessels are. And um, let's see what else now. So you got uh, vitamin B, vitamin D, homocysteine, blood sugar, and blood insulin. There are about two more. Do they do a spinal tap thing with the, um, because there's a neural neurological? Yeah, yeah, so it's spinal tap. But um, I would rather do those are, those seven yeah. things before you get there. I mean, the, when you get to the hospital, so these seven things I'm telling you about, these are things that you probably should just go and get yourself. You can, you, I can actually order these as well. You don't need a doctor to, most doctors won't even do it. I mean, they will say, what, 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 do you, what do you need it for? They won't understand why. Mm -hmm. But if you can, I would say that's a, a good way to, to, to measure your brain health. Now, uh, uh, a spinal tap is extremely painful. Have you done that before? No, but I was reading about input, but the other thing, the, uh, the brain thing, and different uh, things about neurological, yeah. about testing for. You, you don't want to have that. That's, that's, a, that's a terrible, terrible thing. Okay. But a lot of things that you have on there, yeah, you do have to request it from the doctor. And my thing is, and I'm only basing this on when I advocate for my mom, and uh, you have to request certain things to be done. And I always say, especially when you have insurance and they're, you know, you pay it. But my thing is, if they don't want to do it, then you find yourself another doctor. Yeah. Because some doctors, they will, they will question you uh, as far as why you want to have this done, but you have to be the advocate for yourself yeah. and say, well, I want to get this test, especially when it comes to the black community. Yeah. I work at the hospital and, right, so. and I know uh, some things you do have to request because the doctor is not going to tell you. Yeah. And I always tell people too, they should always, especially in the African American community, they should always get their A1C, yeah. uh, always check because it is an epidemic as far as with diabetes yeah. and pre-diabetes. And sometimes we don't always have the signs. Yeah. So those things we need to check, vitamin D, we need to check. You and you have to request, you have to request that, yeah. you know. Uh, and then sometimes when they find out you are pre, the first they want to do is give you a pill, which on the African-American community, they're going to give you metformin. That's the first one they get. But now they're starting to give you the injections, uh, Wegovy or the other one, they help you with your weight loss. You know, so, but the main thing I always say is <coughs> what should you do? So, you know, you can take this, but what should you do that I don't have to take these medications? I can take them to reach what I need to do, but tell me I need to exercise and eat right. Yeah. And that's what they lack in in yeah, our community the, 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 yeah. that's what they lack in our community yeah. because I hear people all the time coming to me well I don't need the classes because you know the doctor is going to give me the way go the and the Olympic the other drug they get, you take the injection and that's how these people are losing this weight but what is it teaching them because they don't know that they should be exercising and they should be eating right and then you have the side effects from that yeah. so uh, with me I always try to tell people, okay, if you want to take that, that's fine, but at least come get the education. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the tests that you're talking about there, yes, when I went through all that with my mom, um, um, it was things that I did request. Yeah. And when she did have one doctor, 
uh, over the years. And um, not going to get down, but he didn't do what he was supposed to do. So that's when I switched over to John Hopkins. And, that, and I always said, okay, and John Hopkins, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, yeah. and we're going to do this. And then I started getting educated on a lot of it. Well, you're lucky, you're lucky to do with Johns Hopkins, but um, the, those tests, they, you do not need a doctor to prescribe them for you. I mean, obviously, you probably won't get insurance that way, but you can go to a lab and actually get those tests done. The vitamin D? The vitamin D? All yeah. seven of the ones. Okay. Of the ones I mentioned, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Oh, no, Alzheimer's, some of this, like, uh, isn't there a hereditary, um, like, uh, Alzheimer's too? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the hereditary one is, it starts earlier, so it's yeah, just Yeah, because I think my cousin's mother will have that. Your what? Yeah, my cousin's mother will have that, the earlier one, the hereditary. Yeah. Like that, so, because you're talking about lifestyle changes, but some, there is one that inherit, right, the gene factor, that's... Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't mean that something can't be done. The fact that it's hereditary or genetic does not mean that it's. But I mean, so just genetic, you still can. Unless you have that, that gene for it, then you can. I don't you know, know what. You know, I, okay, I don't know what there's two, like, there's one that gradually get older, it progresses. Yeah. There's one you have that accelerate because you have the yeah. gene for it. Yeah. So the accelerated version, you can. Counteract that with your healthier lifestyle, as you're saying. Are you? Yes. Okay. For both of them, there's, no, okay. there's almost nothing you cannot address with with, with, uh, with certain interventions. Almost nothing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so everything can be hacked or modified or whatever. It is. Okay. Well, it looks like okay. a good place to go. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, if anybody wants to sign up for his YouTube channel, I have the paper up here. YouTube. Uh, what does it come to? I mean, you said YouTube, right? You said yes, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. yeah. We got it. Okay. Can I have all five of them? Yeah. Okay. Put this back. Thank you.